Interesting story now from the world of business and marketing. The folks at Heineken have got a new commercial. It's entitled Worlds Apart, an experiment. It brings people who have different viewpoints together, united by beer. Check it out. I don't believe that climate change exists. We're not taking enough action on climate change. I think it's about time these people got off the high horse and started looking for credible problems that actually exist. It's absolutely critical that trans people have their own voice. That's not right. You can't, you know, you're, you're a man, be a man, or you're a female, be a female. The four-minute ad pairs up strangers with opposing views on controversial topics such as climate change, trans transgender rights, feminism as well, and they're asked to work together to assemble a set of stools, and later they participate in an intimate question and answer. It's been dubbed the anti-Pepsi ad over that fiasco that Pepsi went through a couple of weeks ago. Let's bring in Bryn Weingard. She's a marketing expert. She joins us now from downtown Toronto. You've seen the ad, and I'm curious what you think it does. Yeah, I think it's a good question. You know, this actually, for me, is not that much different than the Pepsi ad. While Pepsi did a terrible job, and of course, you know, some famous quotes was that it was practically surreal in its thoughtlessness and that it was maybe the worst ad of all time. You know, it, it still uses those social justice issues, social issues, as platforms to sell a product. And so as an ethical consideration as a marketer, I have three main problems with that. And that's first, that they're, they're using those issues to sell a product. Product. Second, that in this case, Heineken, of course, you know, saying baselessly that for some reason they have credit, they have reason to be able to tackle these issues that Pepsi didn't, and there's no reason at all that they would be able to. And third is that they're using, you know, Pepsi's misfortune effectively and the backlash associated with that brand in order to step on that and, and boost themselves up. And so if this is an anti-Pepsi ad, that is an ethical problem as far as I see. So there is the notion of exploiting a client climate change or transgender rights, all of this I mean, in the name of selling beer, Brent. Exactly. And what a challenge that is, right? And we do have, as marketers, ethical considerations and a code of conduct that allows that we, you know, these are not considerations that we should have and or not, not actions we should be able to take. Further to that, keep in mind that Heineken doesn't, as an example, pose a solution to any of those social justice issues, causes or movements, right? So it's not as though they said, we are doing different than Pepsi in the sense that we're setting up a foundation or we're putting our deep pockets and our mainstream voice toward fixing this issue at all. Instead, what they've said is exactly the the same as what Pepsi was entire, intending to do, which is use their product as a device for connection, which they then assume is somehow, again, baselessly, somehow able to, to bring their, their brand to the forefront. So far, the ad has received mostly positive feedback. We'll see, of course, if that changes thanks to social media and whether this gets traction. But I'm wondering why you think, bigger picture, based on your expertise in marketing, why companies would even go there, so to speak, with these sorts of issues? I mean, why not just stick to sort of the nuts and bolts of selling beer? Yeah, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I, it's, and it's such a great question, Todd. I do think that marketers, business people have a voice when it comes to social justice movements. I just think that they should pose solutions and help, especially with their deep pockets. It, the reason I loved your question also is because this is just further evidence of two things. One is riding the tail, you know, the, the tails of Pepsi when they are in, again, in a misfortunate, in, you know, having this disgraceful time. Uh, second is the lengths that brands will go to now in order to cut through the cloud anything can go viral and what they're hoping for is that it does and so you're really looking at brands willing to take these huge risks risks that you know historically we never would have taken never would have thought possible in the interest again of boosting their own brand of getting that that whatever their message is to go viral of cutting through the clutter and becoming again you know familiarized and known Brent, great to have you on the program thanks for this today thanks Todd